So now we're going to look at another single pull double throw switch. This is actually a electromechanical relay right there. There's actually two single pull double throw switches in there making the whole unit a double pull double throw switch. Hopefully that makes sense. So there's two of these uh, built into there but we're only using one. So as far as this circuit is concerned we have a single pull double throw. There is a second pull for that double pull double throw that has two positions but we're not using it. So in any case we got the one on the left there. This is a mechanical switch that's this upper part right there and then it's controlled electrically. So none of the electricity over here interacts with the electricity over here although I have one power supply powering everything a uh, voltage regulator right here though is keeping 5 volts across the LEDs and the resistors right there. It's very important to understand you can use one power source just for uh, switching the relay right there and then a completely separate power source powering the loads that, that switches back and forth. Let's get to that uh, right now. So we got that LED lit up. This is the normally closed position right there. That's how it normally uh, wants to be if you don't have current uh, flowing through the inductor right there. So this is resting as far as the switch is concerned. I put this jumper to the positive supply right there. Doesn't matter which way you go through uh, the coil. And uh, we do have a dial though it does matter if you have that dial there. Um, you should use that dial there to catch inductive kickback. But now we forced, we energized, I closed this switch, we energized that coil. It pushed that switch over to the normally open. Normally open means the same as normally off. You can see we got an opening there. It's off, that's in the normal spot, but now we forced it, uh, the switch to go over there. So now it's connected and that LED can light up. We got that LED right there. So this uh, relay, I'll uh, unenergize the coil and when I unenergized the coil, so you can think of this switch closed, currents flowing through, push that switch over there, but currents flowing through. When I open the switch, current doesn't stop instantly. You'll get a spark in the switch, maybe something bad somewhere will happen. So instead, we have a dial there that will let the current uh, keep coming back into the inductor until the magnetic field collapses, which also is when the switch goes back. But once it collapses and current stops flowing, um, the collapsing magnetic field is what keeps it flowing. Once it completely collapses, there'll be no more uh, current flow. So this is reverse bias in terms of the power supply. So when you have the switch closed, no current goes into the diode uh, that way. It has to go through the coil, but when you open the switch, then it can capture the current going that way through the inductor. So, in any case, uh, we demonstrated that. When I yank this, you'll see that LED turns off right there. We got the pins on the bottom. So, this is the common pin right there, the uh, middle one. That's why it's going to this uh, jumper. It's always connected to ground. The LEDs are coming from 5 volts because of the regulator right there. We're not going to go on the regulator too much. Basically, it takes the 12 volts from the supply there and it drops. Um, since it's 12 volts, 7 volts. So that we get 5 at the uh, bottom pin right there coming to the two uh, resistors. And um, if you had a higher voltage, it would drop more voltage so that you end up with 5 out. That's how it works. And usually there's some capacitors there on uh, both... Uh, between the positive and ground there and also between uh, ground and the output but I didn't add them there you don't usually need them so in any case uh, yeah we got the relay there so this is where the coil is down there and uh, across those two points and then up here again no wires or anything goes across it's all uh, magnetic up here we have the mechanical switch part right there so we could use the other side this side is separate from that side right there None of the electricity flowing around here uh, would flow over there if we had two circuits, but they would both switch at the same time. Uh, be aware of that. So, in any case, um, that's about it. And again, we got the uh, diode right there. So, when I yanked the switch out, of course, we didn't have any of this. We had a gap between ground and the cathode of the LEDs. Got to make sure you put them in the right way. So, in any case, I showed the pins there. We got the schematic there. Um, I know this is kind of cluttered. Again, this is a voltage regulator. So it drops whatever extra voltage above 5 volts. We're not going to go over that in too much detail. 
that's uh, kind of the uh, main reason why I got different voltages on the schematic diagram right here just to point out this part of the relay is completely separate from that part electrically you know it just moves based on what's going over here the switch part of it but uh, you could use a 12 volt source for this particular relay and there's relay modules don't actually buy relays um, they are almost as expensive as a module which does all the work you power the module and then you got a signal that switches the relay on and off and then the load of course is uh, separate uh, right there but the switch does move and you can use a completely different uh, power supply so in any case always keep that in mind actually buy a module and uh, learn how to use those but just be aware the control part of the circuit all the current going through the inductor and all that if you have a module the signal the switch it and everything is completely separate from the power unless you use the same power source of course um, it's completely separate from what the load is uh, doing right there it's not electrically connected so you can take high voltage so these uh you know i i won't wire it up but uh these modules they have uh for the ac usually they got like 120 volts on them and uh so uh yeah that says 240 right there i know it's not going to show up on camera very good uh, but yeah that actually says 240 uh, for alternating uh, current right there and of course you know those pins are kind of small wouldn't want to probably do high current at high voltage but uh, in any case it's also very dangerous um, but uh, for DC you know either steady DC or turning on and off um, rapidly they kind of got dots down there but it all going in the same direction like we got here you can go up to 30 volts and um, so in any case it's uh, that's for the load right there this part up here down here it's just 12 volts either there's no 12 volts right now or you can apply the 12 volts in either direction doesn't matter but you may have to you will have to turn the uh, diode around if you go the other direction um, but in any case um, we got the 12 volts there now we remove 12 volts this is a 12 volt relay so you usually see that number at the end right there and if I applied 5 volts to this and it didn't switch, you know, and I saw the 12 there, I would realize, okay, I need 12 volts. need a higher one. There are uh, 5 volt relays. Um, but uh, the ones I got just floating around, right here, these basic ones, I do have some 5 volt latching relays. Um, but in any case, this is all I think I got is 12 volts for uh, that particular uh, relay, just the, the base component right there. So I use that on the schematic. So in any case, um, yeah, if... Uh, you really want to see that there's five volts I'll grab the multimeter right now so now got the meter down there you can see we got 12 volts about 15 milliamps of current the uh, bulk of it's going through that LED the rectifier does use up a little bit of current and whatnot you're gonna see here that uh, when I energize the coil the uh, current goes up and the lower the voltage of the relay the more current it's gonna need to uh, switch uh, generally speaking right there so if you had like a 24 volt relay it probably need even less current of course this current is both the uh, coil current and the LED so I'll try not to uh, connect this to uh, a couple of wires or something but yeah there you'll you'll see uh, looks like the coil needs about 45 milliamps of current and I can't see where I'm aiming uh, from there uh, and then you know about probably about 15 milliamps more uh, when we return the LED so that's the two currents put together um, so you know if you had something um, that you wired up this would be the one where you don't want it lit the most amount of time because it's using up that, that coil current this would be the preferred uh, setting right there and then for whatever reason when you have a period of time um, that uh, you are okay with using up more current you would uh, set that uh, right there now we will set the meter to measure voltage we saw that's 12 these are 220 ohm resistors and uh, we got about 15 milliamps of current so we know there's about 5 volts across them so first we'll go to the the uh, regulator right there so it's a 7805 78 7800 series integrated circuit that's an integrated circuit even though it looks like a transistor means that it's a voltage regulator the 05 means 5 volts out so uh, we can go up there you can see positive um, 
input is on top and then ground is in the middle there the output is at the bottom so I can go anywhere to ground doesn't matter and I uh, will touch the LED right there and we'll see that uh, it's about uh, 5 volts and uh, it's actually lower than I expected probably do better with a capacitor so let's grab a couple of those so now actually I just have a little capacitor it's half of a microfarad um, between the uh, ground and the output that should be all we need so there we go and uh, that energized the coil that was a click that we got and uh, so on right there but yeah now you'll see and this meter has been on a while I'll turn it on and off so it doesn't start beeping that uh, again we got uh, 12 volts at the supply but now we'll be closer to 5 volts at the output uh, right there there you can see much closer so um, Capacitor is not vital, but uh, usually it makes a, uh, a difference in getting the uh, precise uh, voltage right there. That helps out a lot. So we have, as I said before, the voltage regulator. It doesn't drop, um, you know, 7 volts. It is right now, 7 volts. I think it uh, would be perfectly fine with uh, 14 volts uh, through the coil right there. Doesn't have to be spot on at 12 volts. They, they usually have a you know uh, arrange you gotta check the data sheet for the exact amount um but in case uh let's go back so yeah now it's 14 at the supply still five volts coming out uh the exact same the capacitor helping to make sure and um so now that's 14 volts that means we're dropping about seven or i mean nine sorry it was seven before we're dropping about nine volts out of the 14 so that we get five volts out nine plus five is 14 and so on as you can see there so this is a uh, voltage uh, regulator there's going to be more current because with the higher voltage you're getting more current through the coil right there something to be aware of and I'm going to lower this back to a uh, 12 volts I'll uh, show you on there so not sure of the max but I'm pretty sure you can do 15 volts uh, pretty safe again I always check the data sheet for specifics and um, we will turn this off now and uh, conserve things a little bit more so yeah I think that's uh, really about it so we will end this coming back uh, to the schematic that I drew right there the main takeaways again were that we have a switch single pole double throw there's two positions with one pole if you're just using one side you can use both of them then you have a double pole double throw switch the two separates or the two switches are completely separate and then the way you control them is also completely separate uh, electrically right there so you can use the same power supply to uh, power them you can use the same voltage and everything um, the switching part can be a lot higher voltage than what you got at the relay so you can use a 12 volt uh, source of some kind maybe a battery or something and then have a high voltage uh, circuit that you're controlling but none of that high voltage interacts with anything over there so you don't have to worry about like getting electrocuted or something if you touch this part of the circuit just because it's switching um, you know a higher voltage that's a good uh, use for it making it safer for you if you uh, have to switch higher uh, voltages for some reason you don't want your switch part of it um, to be electrified so in any case that's about it thanks for watching make sure you check out one of the other videos i'm posting on the screen and check out links down below they all help out a lot i'll see you in the next video